Ethereum is going to go to heights unimaginable. We're going to see a $20,000 Ethereum. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Thank you for watching my videos. My name is DaVinci Jeremy. I'm in the pipe 5x5, five five five, staying alive here in Dubai. You know how I do. I'm doing good. I'm going to be going to uh, Hamburg next week, right? I'm leaving on the 27th um, to uh, Block Chance. I'm going to be at the conference there. So hopefully, I will see you there. Um, also, um, we're going to be talking about some news. We're going to talk about why I see Ethereum like going to the moon and even outperforming Bitcoin, doing better than Bitcoin in this uh, segment, news segment, and then doing some trades. And if you're interested in doing some trades, make sure you head over to bybit.davincij15.com, okx.davincij15.com, or if you don't like KYC, you can get head over to two, the T-O-O, dot davincij15.com. Links are in the description below, and you can get massive trading bonuses uh, if you follow the um, the provided information. Okay. Yeah, so make sure you head over there, both to davincij15.com or okx.davincij15.com. Now let's just head over to the news. Crypto.com is trading on its own exchange. It's just that's totally fine. What the hell? We can trade on our exchange. Yeah, we get to know what your stop losses are, <laughs> what, your, what, your, what your take profits are. So we can take your money. <laughs> oh, uh, totally fine. Totally fine. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, crypto.com, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Stop, stop the, stop the nonsense. Just, just stop. Right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna continue. I'm not even bother reading this article. It is obviously stupid, right? You know they can. They're gonna say, "Well, we're not going to do that. We're not do. We're not going to allow our traders to give information, unfair information." Oh, come on, come on, come on. We're not. We're not dumb here. Okay, we're not children. Okay, this is interesting. Thirty-five trillion Shiba regains profitability as. Shiba Inu is outshining the crypto market. And I'm like, I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And I, I go over to the Shiba charts and just for the year, you know, we did just see an all time low. So I'm not sure. And then just pumped up a little bit. I'm not sure what this guy's what this guy's smoking. Uh, with that article, but he's obviously just pushing some Shiba onto people, right? So that he could sell his bags. Look how sad he is. He looks sad. He looks like a person who's like, I lost a lot of money in Shiba, right? So I need to, I, I need to pump that. <laughs> look at him. Look at him. Look at this kid. <laughs> I need to pump my Shiba bags on this news board. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, moving on. Banning crypto may not be effective in the long run, IMF is saying. Duh! <laughs> I think I've been saying that for a long while, you know, because people will tell me, yeah, yeah, government's going to band together and ban all crypto. What are you going to do? Yeah, because every time the government's banned something, that, that means it, it, it gets eliminated and disappears from the universe. That's why... There's, you don't you can't buy drugs, right? You can't buy books, right? And because they pat, banned books in the past. And you can't you can't buy anything that's completely banned and contraband at all. Nah, no. You know, in Venezuela, it's illegal to use the US dollars yet and nobody uses US dollars there. They only use the boulevards. Nothing else. <laughs> Damn. All righty. Well, the interesting thing here is let's just read what they have to say here. While a few countries have completely banned crypto assets, giving their risks, yes, the risks 
are not to you and me, it's risk to the government. (laughs) This approach may not be effective in the long run. The region should instead focus on addressing the drivers of crypto demand. That means a lot of your people tell them it's really bad, scary, stay away. (laughs) Include citizens unmet digital payment needs. Yeah, CBDC. Give them a CBDC. Make sure they can easily transact digitally, right? And not not uh, block them so much, right? Maybe only a little bit. And on improving transparency, yeah, make sure it's transparent that you can see all the money that they got. They can't see all the money you got. <laughs> By recording crypto assets uh, transactions in national statistics, right? They're going to record that, hey, we're going to see how well crypto is penetrating our society and see if we are actually working, what's working and what's not. So in the end, all they can do is slow down the trend right, of people moving to crypto. That's all they can do. And the statistics, national statistics, they give them that statistics, they can see if the trend is slowing down. And that's all they'll be able to do is slow stuff down. Okay. My favorite, CNBC Jim Cramer slams bogus crypto projects. All right, so he, you know, Tramer, right? He's just, you know, he he's he's got an inverse fund that if you were to take his inverse fund, you'd be up ninety percent. It's, it's like his, uh, I'm sorry, his uh, his calls are inverse calls are ninety percent accurate, right? So, uh, yeah, interesting guy. The prominent stock picker manager has been known for his fluctuating opinions on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies over the years, but this recent tweet made his current view clear. So yeah, this guy has flip-flopped on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency so many times. I'm. Do you remember earlier this year, it's like he's marked at the, the, the bottom of crypto, saying, I'm never going to touch another uh, crypto ever again. And then from that day, crypto just skyrocketed. Yes? Thank you, Kramer, for that call. Understand, I'm not against crypto and having ha, and have done quite well with it. Crypto tweeted, Kramer tweeted, Kramer tweeted, I'm against bogus crypto and outfits that stole your money and won't let you have it back. You mean like FTX? <laughs> why did you why did you call a spade a spade? Whatever. Okay. Okay. Once again, um, I'm going to block chance. This is your last chance to get, uh, you know, if, uh, tickets to that. Uh, you can get uh, 30% off, right, at, at block chance. I'll see you guys there uh, next week. Okay. Um, Ethereum price predictions are for 2023, 2025, and 2030. Now, I really think I, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go over one of the other things is like, this is interesting. You can see that. Uh, the number of uh, addresses that have been created are a lot higher in Ethereum because Ethereum has more use case. And as there's more use case and this use case continues to go up, that means um, more people need Ethereum. And so its valuation has to go higher than Bitcoin because there's more use case. Now, it doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to have programmability. It doesn't. It has its own use case in, in and of itself. Right. Well, Ethereum has a problem, right? It can be uh, government can control it. Okay, so they're saying that Bitcoin can be for uh, during the um uh, the next uh, bull run, it can be as high as six thousand five hundred. I think that's a little low, a little low. I think uh, closer to ten k might be in the next uh, bull market, but uh, at thirty to twenty thousand in twenty thirty, uh, I think we're going to see it well over twenty thousand. I believe easily because, um, well, there's more use case for Ethereum than there is for Bitcoin. More people can um, come up with applications and cool things for those for um, for Ethereum projects. So, yeah. All right. Bitcoin, uh, the consolidation here is going to be a while, even though we can see some W's here on the hourly. I would be very, very carefully on the, uh, these trades. Uh, if you're going to take this trade, make sure you take it properly. 
Uh, if it breaks out here on this W, right, this is um, this is your your stop loss. You should take a one to one risk to reward ratio. You see that that's inside the range. Might do a little bit outside, but that's okay. And then you know you take it to get make sure you get a two to one risk to reward ratio by moving your stop losses up a little bit here. There you go. Do not get greedy, right? Remember what I say: uh, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered, right? So, but wait for the breakout, and then you, away you go. Uh, looking at Ethereum, let's go down to the hourly. Again, you can see there is no um, patterns here to, to take us higher. Um, Ethereum pumps right up to the to the last um, support level, which is uh, this was way over here. But anyways, um, don't know why that's marked here. It should have been marked way over here. That's the next. That's the next support level, and you can see that uh, I mean resistance, not support. This is support. The green ones are now support. And we've gone up to this resistance level, and you can see that Ethereum is trying to decide where, which way to go uh, on the hourly. So we have to wait a little bit before we can make any kind of trades. Um, you can try to uh, wait for a, a hail. There's a, there, a hail mary trade here on the shorter term time frames. Now that I'm zoomed in here, you can see um, you want to wait, maybe wait for another hail mary return here. This is a little bit. Uh, um, off, but you know we're um we were above the um the EMA ribbons. I would say that this, if you want to if you trade this, wait for any kind of return to the lows here before you um you buy and see if you could take it up to these these air the the the, the, the top of the range here because uh, Ethereum has is going to chop and range between this top and then and probably this bottom here. We're probably seen a bottom as this thing is turned around so if you're interested you, you'd look for a buy zone at the 61.8 or the 78.6 uh, levels as you can see here okay that's it for today i hope you enjoyed today's episode i hope you learned something i hope you um enjoyed it and yeah um make sure you hit the like hit the subscribe and have a good weekend cheers